Okay, <laughs> thank you. Well, our next guest is one of the new boys in the very male-dominated House of Commons. But before we find out how his first few weeks have gone, Afshin has a mission impossible for Colonel Bob Stewart. That's right. Uh, as the former commander of UN forces in Bosnia, as well as a glittering NATO career, um, I was hoping whether Bob will be able to uh, figure out what all this means. Uh, thank you very much for coming on board, Bob. Um, before we talk about... Uh, uh, what it's like to be a new MP in the House of Commons? What, what does this mean? Um, goodness knows what that means. It's the insurgency. No I mean, fundamentally, it's a sort of um, social science approach to uh, how to win an insurgency, I presume. I mean, frankly, if I was shown this, I'm afraid I would just clam up because it means so little to me. The fundamental principles must be there, but it's obscured. It's rather like the signal coming through, but it's obscured by noise. There's a heck of a lot of noise there, which... What about troops on the ground taking... Well, they won't be looking at this, casualties. the troops. Do you think the they'll be showing this? No, the this, is, this is a high-level uh, description of the operation, probably designed for, you know, government to, to spend hours sort of looking at it. But on the ground, it's much more simple. If the Taliban got their hands on this map, I mean, would it be detrimental? I think it'd be a jolly good idea be if it was sent to the Taliban, to be honest, because, quite frankly, if they spent their time working out what this means, um, it would actually stop people dying in Afghanistan. That would be a great idea. Let's send it to the Taliban, because maybe they could make head or tail Let's of it. Let's think of sending it to yeah. them. So, obviously, the British military does things quite differently no, to the American No, no, I mean, at, at some levels. We, we work extremely well with, with the Americans, but my sort of level, I commanded a battalion my kind of level, if I put that map up in front of my soldiers, they just start laughing, frankly. But it is not designed for that. That is designed for a high level thing for journalists like yourself. Well, you're widely tipped to have a major influence over the new coalition <laughs> government <laughs> really? when it comes to yeah. defence policy. Uh, Liam Fox, uh, the uh, defence minister here, visited Afghanistan and uh, what did you think of his comments that he made? Because uh, people saw them as quite controversial, talking about a 13th century country, and it was not up to Britain to uh, reorder and restructure uh, another country. For well, I agree with the latter part, certainly. It is not up to us to restructure another country. In fact, you know, my view of going into Afghanistan, fundamentally, in the first place, was because of what happened in, in New York. Um, and in the second place, we're not there to actually design how another country... Um, so what Tony Blair seemed to think. Yeah, that may be. I'm talking about what I think. You know, what I think is that we've got to do our very best, and that's what we're trying to do, to get the, the country stable, to get the country peaceful enough, to, to care enough to try and leave the Afghan population in a decent situation. Now, w we are involved. We are where we are. And uh, the idea of actually just abandoning is, is not possible. The idea of actually being there forever is impossible too. So we're actually looking at somewhere in between. Somehow or other... You don't think it's making it worse? The British presence is actually making the situation worse and endangering this country? I don't think so. Uh, I, well, there's there's that, that as well. Um, I haven't really looked at it like that. I've, I've looked at it in terms of actually getting the situations sorted for the Afghans and um, and a proper and sensible withdrawal. I mean, me, I actually see no advantage in British military forces being in Afghanistan apart from to help the Afghan people. I'm an internationalist in this respect, and all my life I felt like this. Now, we, Bob, we in London, I'll finish this, mm -hmm. one. we in London are lucky. We don't live in a society where there's people knocking on your door, carting you away, killing you, and Some we are lucky, differ about uh, that. Um, you know, yeah. but, but uh, we don't normally, okay? But, and therefore, and I feel quite, quite strong on this because I've worked for the United Nations, and the United Nations mission, and, and I think it's part of the United Nations mission, is that if we can help in other countries to try and stop brutality, then we are, we should. Now that's my view, and I know it's a bit like Tony Blair's view, and so, but that's what I felt when I went to Bosnia in the 90s. That's why, that's the way I felt. I wasn't there to dominate the country. Of course, I was Bosnia is quite different. To I know it's different. I'm just talking about philosophy. Yes, but um, you've come from a military background, very regimented, quite strict and disciplined. You're now with 
the rabble, as some of them call them, down the road. How have your first few weeks been? Has it been all plain sailing? You know, in the military, Yvonne, you have much more freedom and flexibility than if you are under the whipping system of a party in Parliament. When there's a three-line whip, it means that if you're not there, you'll almost face a death sentence. You have to be there. There is no, there's no excuse whatsoever. So there's a heck of a lot of discipline in politics too, which doesn't show obviously. Um, and there's a lot of indiscipline too. For example, I haven't yet got an office in Parliament. You've got a laptop. Do you think you've got a laptop? Yeah, a I've got a laptop and I've got a locker coach. and I've got a hot desk. Do you know what? Fine by me. As far as I'm concerned, my office is the case I wander around with and that suits me down to the ground as long as I can actually do what I'm sent there for. I'm not worrying about expenses. I know everyone goes on about this. My job in, in Parliament is to represent the people who elected me, whether they voted for me or whether they didn't. Well, Bob Stewart MP, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Someone who is no longer sitting on the green benches is Lambert Opic. His shock defeat as the Liberal Democrat MP for Montgomeryshire was one of the sadder headlines during election night. Sad for uh, Lambert, that is. But you can't uh, keep a good man down. In fact, Lambert, uh, your tears have turned to laughter. What, what are you up to? Well, so they say, my laughter, my greatest joy is being on your show, of course. Of course. And discovering that, uh, and for the sake of the viewers, that is real. I thought it was a projection till now. You must Green be screen. spending it for, oh yes, certainly, yes, indeed. So um, that's impressive. But uh, the one you're referring to, I think, is my, uh, my attempt at stand-up next uh, Wednesday, 2nd of